Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Ram Ram Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivinda Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivinda Krishna I'm curious here about this armadillo. <laughs> armadillo has been coming around here and he's just not afraid at all of me. He comes right up to me and looks at me and then goes on his way. Huh, Krishna, our armadillo is aggressive. I'm looking up here. Huh. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama. Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Siddhi Yavar Bhaktivinoda. Krishna. Uh, yeah, it's a funny little animal with uh, funny looking. You got two little rabbit ears sticking up, and a big long nose that's kind of like flat on the end. And then his body is like, it looks like a shell armor. And he's got like claws. Yeah, armadillo in Spanish means. Uh, little armored ones. They can move quite quickly, even though they have little legs. Okay. Uh. I'm curious about if that was unusual 
for this little these little armadillos to just come around just come like right up to me like right at I'm standing there he's like two feet away and just look at me like and I'm like aren't you supposed to be afraid of me I'm a human being should I be afraid of you? Are you going to bite me? I mean, should we be afraid of each other? And he just looks at me like, hmm, no problems. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, he says here, the nine-banded armadillo tends to jump straight in the air when surprised. Yeah. I made a loud noise and I saw me like went like you know, like three feet in the air. Boom <laughs> Jump. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Yeah, they're not uh it doesn't say anything about them being aggressive. But I'm just like why do they come right up to me? They feed on ants and termites. Well, that's good. Good. So many ants here. Bad ants. Good. Go for it, Armadillo. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> well, it doesn't say anything about it them attacking or anything. All right, so that's who's here. I've seen a big one and two little baby ones. And they both just seem fine. They don't care if I'm standing there digging in the garden or putting mulch around the bushes. They're just right there, like next to me, looking for ants. <laughs> Okay, that's good. Found out about that. Krishna, I was I was looking at um like I watch this series every night. I'm catching up. It's a series of podcasts and where uh, a devotee has taken it on as his service to bring people on to a podcast, devotees, and have them share their Krishna consciousness, their journey, who they are, what they do, what they've realized, um, what their hopes for the future are. It's really a wonderful series. It was started two or three years ago, and I just found it. So every night I'm watching one of these podcasts. <clears throat> Last night the devotee was uh, he's a, a Sanskrit scholar, and he's very personal. He wasn't like head in the sky scholar. It wasn't that kind. He was like right there. And he was talking about some very uh, controversial things uh, in the light of scripture. And um, it was, he was very good. He was very good. He was <clears throat> trying to present as tactfully as possible, um, Raganuga. And he briefly touched on the difference between Vaidhi Bhakti, practicing under rules and regulations, and Raganuga Bhakti, which means <clears throat> getting to the level of emotions in loving exchange with Krishna. It was very nicely done. I, I, I really appreciated his discussion. Um, he just kind of skimmed over the surface, you know, like dropped a bomb and left, you know. <laughs> he wasn't trying to pound any, anybody over the head with it. He just kind of like dropped a few bombs, and went on talking in rather just, you know, conversational mode. <laughs> Oh, that's really good. Uh, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. If the goal is love of God, 
If the goal is prema, or ecstatic love, for the personality of Godhead, <clears throat> it's not going to happen without emotions. It's just not going to happen without emotions. I mean, what does love mean if there's no emotions, there's no feelings? So the problem is not being able to distinguish spirit, spiritual forms, from matter, temporary material forms. That's the problem. So the Vaidhi Bhakti helps, but in a very regulated way, <clears throat> um, disentangling from this problem of not being able to distinguish spirit, spiritual forms from material forms, temporary material forms, eternal spiritual forms, temporary material forms. Good morning. Good morning, Lance. Hare Krishna. Good morning. <laughs> Time to get up. <laughs> what was it? Krishna would be lying in bed with his queens, like Rukmini, and the crows, the cocks would crow. <laughs> and Rukmini would curse them. Ah, because that made Krishna was going to get up. It was just before dawn. <laughs> Leave her side and begin his practices as a householder. Spiritual practices as a householder. <clears throat> yeah, so in the interview that I watched yesterday, um, he was reaffirming what I've been hearing um, more and more from advanced devotees about the difference between Vaidhi Bhakti and Raganuga Bhakti and how emotions uh, will have to be uh, surrendered to Krishna, these different emotions. Uh, Hare Krishna. So I was chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And then I started to think about, see it in the mind wanders. Um, I posted something uh, on the internet, Facebook, about, uh, can you say incarnation? Can you say... Transcendence. Can you say Hare Krishna? It was just a little thought. I thought it was fun. Uh, and then a friend made a comment how sometimes when she sees a little animal, a squirrel, a rabbit, a dog, whatever she's seeing, some little animal, she'll say, it when I posted that, it reminded of her, what she says, have you heard of Radharani? She's heard of you. It was just such a sweet thing, that, that consciousness, that meditation. But then I thought, yeah, but when I did that, I wasn't thinking of necessarily Radha. I was thinking of the incarnation of <clears throat> Krishna Balaram and Gornitai. Krishna Balaram, that's the incarnation when I think of the Hare Krishna movement, I think of Krishna Balaram. I think of Gornatai, who is a manifestation of Krishna Balaram. So then I was looking at her comment and how she was thinking about Radha. So then I was like, well, how does all of this fit in? You know, there's Krishna Balaram, where's Radha? And I was saying, well, Lord Chaitanya is Krishna, but he's in the mood of Radha, so Radha and Krishna are in him. It's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Radha and Krishna are both there. And then there's Balaram. Then I was thinking, well, it's Hare Krishna, Hare Ram, so there's also the gopis and, and, and Radha with Balaram. They also have Ras. 
Because how is this? What, what, how do I? How do I find my way through this? What's going on here? And I was thinking about the Panchatattva and how the Radhar Pandit, it's described, is an incarnation of Radharani, to be with Krishna when he has this pastime of Garanga. I'm like, oh, how many Radhas are there? This is getting very confusing. Is this, I, how do I understand this? And on top of it all, the whole thing, the Gaurila, is taking place in Vrindavan. Krishna is in Vrindavan when he's overcome with this mood of wanting to experience what it's like for Radha when she's feeling separation from Krishna. So there's Gadadha Pandit, who's an incarnation of Radharani, with Krishna, who's going through this mood of, of what's it like to be Radha. When she's feeling separation from me, he is Krishna. And she's incarnated there as Gadadha Pandit. And I was thinking, the whole thing is so crazy. It's, the Lord is actually mad in ecstasy. He's gone mad. And that's the only way any of it makes any sense. And on top of it, to enter Vrindavan is not very easy. It's the most intimate abode of Krishna. It's not easy to enter Vraj, the mood of Vraj, actually have an emotional, loving emotional connection with Krishna. I mean, that's not so easy or cheap because of this problem, not being able to distinguish between spirit and matter. That's the problem. But also, um, it's just kind of blind. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. But here in Gaur Lila, which is taking place in Vrindavan, they're coming from all over the universe. They're entering Vraj through Gorlila. They, who's they? We, me, us, the most fallen. <laughs> we're, we're entering the most intimate mode of the Lord through this Gorlila. They're coming from the higher planets. They're coming from the lower planets. They're getting liberation. The demons are coming. Everybody's coming. Gorlila. And everyone's getting this Krishna Prema. Why? Because the Lord has gone bad in the mood of separation of Radha. He's intoxicated. Uh, the uh, interview that I listened to, I posted it. Um, it's with... Uh, forget, it begins with a P his name, um, Krishna, he, um, again, you know, he dropped these bombs and then just continued on in normal conversation, and he's dropping all these Raganuga bombs, right, and he, he was saying, and, and I've heard this before, you know, if you, if you want to become a drunkard, associate with drunkards, so you want to become mad in love of Godhead, associate with those who are mad in love of Godhead. Hare Krishna. It's all association. If you associate with out and out materialists, you'll fall down into out and out materialistic activities. Then you associate with devotees who are experiencing ecstatic emotions and loving feelings for Krishna and having realizations that are relishing the scriptures, the met going deep into the messages of love of Godhead in the scriptures. 
are, are getting some taste and are becoming a little crazy themselves. <laughs> And that's how you get it. It's contagious. <laughs> Association is contagious. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare. Well, if you don't want it, just get a vaccination and wear a mask. And keep six feet away. And just keep practicing rules and regulations, and you'll be immune. Hi, <laughs> Krishna. And, and if you see one, go like this. Ugh. Ugh. Hi, Krishna. Disgusting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Who is it? Ramachandra Puri. In Gorlila. I believe the Lord was in Jagannath Puri by then. And Ramachandra Puri was a god brother of. Lord Chaitanya's Diksha Guru, Ishra Puri, who was an ecstatic disciple of Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri was the first to appear with this mood of um, conjugal mood for Krishna. Up to that point, the highest mood available, the highest ras was parental. And that's why you had these little deities of little Krishna holding this little sweet ball. That's the, the, the mood that was available. Um, but Madhavendra Puri appeared by Krishna's arrangement because he was preparing the way for Goranga Leela. And he uh, he had a two he had disciples. One was Ishra Puri, who <clears throat> was totally surrendered in loving mood for his for Krishna through his spiritual master Madhavendra Puri. He he received the gift of praying from Madhavendra Puri. And the other was Ramachandra Puri, who was a learned scholar, but remained hard hard hearted austerities rules, austerities. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, and he was staying in Jagannath Puri, Ramachandra Puri, the god brother of his spiritual master, would come sometimes. He was a sannyasi and he was touring and preaching and he would come and he would find fault. He loved to find fault, especially about taking prasadam. One thing he used to do was he would get a lot of prasadam from the Jagannath temple and then he would invite the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for prasadam. This is the spiritual master, the uh, god brother of Lord Chaitanya's spiritual master. He would invite the followers of uh, Garanga over. And he would feed them and feed them and feed them this prasadam. And they'd say, we're full, we can't eat anymore. They're all renunciates. And it was, more, take more. Take. And he would stuff them till they couldn't even walk. And then he would criticize them. See, they take too much prasadam. Just see, look. They eat like, look how they eat. They don't honor prasadam, they just... They're just stuffing their faces with it. But he would make them eat it. He would force them. He wouldn't let them go. And then he'd sit down and he'd eat, like, and eat and eat and eat and eat. So, 
he was visiting Mahaprabhu and he saw some ants on the floor. Now, they, these are like huts, you know, thatched huts. And the floor isn't described, but it's very likely just like a dirt floor, very likely. Um, you know, he saw some ants. And he, he said, see, look, I know what this is. You're a sannyasi, but at night, you're eating sweets. You're eating sweets at night. Look, that's why the ants are here. Mm. What kind of sannyasi is that? So, he's the god brother of Mahaprabhu's spiritual master. He wasn't eating sweets, and if he was, so what? But so he took it and he cut his eating in half. He was already taking not very much, but he cut it in half. And all the followers were like, oh no, because that was fun for them, sharing prasad with the Lord. You know, it was a it was relishing Krishna's mercy together, prasadam, eating together. Oh no, the Lord is fasting. Oh no. They wanted Ramachandra Puri to go away. Just go away. And eventually he did. He left. He went on tour. And everyone was like, oh, He's gone. Oh. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Yeah, so when I was I was thinking of incarnation, I was thinking Krishna Balaram and then well where's Radha? And then well Lord Chaitanya is Radha and Krishna combined. So there's Radha, but then that didn't make sense because Gadadhar Pandit is an incarnation of Radharani. So now there's two Radharanis. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Nityananda is Balaram, Gadadhar is Radharani. All to take part in, in the mood of Krishna and separation. And then the only way it made any sense is the Lord's crazy. He's gone mad. He's gone mad in the mood of Radharani and separation. That's the only way it makes any sense. If that makes any sense. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hari Hari. He's in, a, he's in an intoxicated state. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. And in that state, he's not making any distinction. Who's who and who's qualified and who's fit and who isn't fit and who's who has the requi uh, required prerequisites and who's done this and who's done that. He's just giving it out freely. Because he's gone mad. And that's what we've got. <laughs> Krishna. Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda. She had way to get at her. She was a little bit of a And we have a summary study of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. By the divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And this is continuing the uh, chapter on the liberation of King Jarasandha. 
So, hmm. So, uh, Yudhisthira is performing the Rajasuya, the king of all sacrifices, to establish that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and everyone is his servant. He's even uh, inviting the demigods to come and surrender. <laughs> now there's a king for you. And uh, they have one bugaboo to deal with, and that's Jarasandha. They can't perform this Rajasuya unless all the kings are surrendered, either willingly by giving taxes and supporting the sacrifice, or if they're not willing, being conquered and having taking away the boogie and using it for the sacrifice. So Jarasandha is not going to surrender. But they don't want to fight with armies. They've come up with another plan. And this was the plan that uh, Uddhava, I got, I got a plan, I got an idea. You know, let, let Bhima fight one-on-one. -on -one. You go, be there. You got to be there, you know, to pull this off. You go there, and I think Arjuna also goes in Bhima, and dress up like Brahmins. Because Jarasandha, he's always giving charity. Anything a Brahmin wants, he'll give. Well, he's not a devotee of Krishna, but he recognizes religious principles and the benefit of pious activities. And he, if you go dressed as Brahmins, he'll give whatever you ask for. So you ask to fight with him. And he'll have to fight. <clears throat> okay, so they're headed out there. King Jarasandha was a very dutiful householder, and he had great respect for the Brahmins. He was a great fighter, a Chatriya king, but he was never neglectful of Vedic injunctions. According to Vedic injunctions, the Brahmins are considered to be the spiritual masters of all other castes. Lord Krishna, Arjuna, and Bhimasen were actually Chatriyas, but they dressed themselves as Brahmanas. And at the time when King Jarasandha was to give charity to the Brahmanas and receive them as guests, they approached him. Hmm. Sneaky! Sneaky! Lord Krishna, in the dress of a Brahmin, said to the king, we wish all glories to your majesty. We are three guests at your royal palace, and we are coming from a great distance. We have come to ask you for charity, and we hope that you will kindly bestow upon us whatever you ask, whatever we ask from you. Now, Jarasandha had tried to fight with Krishna, like, 18 times. <laughs> and he lost each time. 18th time, he thought he killed Krishna, but actually Krishna escaped. So here's Krishna again in his face, dressed as a Brahmin. We know you are, um, we know about your good qualities. A person who is tolerant is always prepared to tolerate everything, even though distressful just as a criminal can perform the most abominable acts. So a great charitable person like you can give anything and everything he's asked for. For a great personality like you, <clears throat> there's no distinction between relatives and outsiders. A famous man lives forever, even after his death. Therefore, any person who is completely fit and able to execute acts which will perpetuate his good name and fame, and yet does not do so, becomes abominable in the eyes of great persons. Such a person cannot be condemned enough, and his refusal to give charity <clears throat> is lamentable throughout his whole life. Now, Krishna approached Bali Maharaj as a Brahmin, a dwarf Brahmin, 
and he asked for something too. <laughs> he asked for everything that King Bali had. The upper planetary systems, the lower planetary systems, and he even put his foot on Bali's head. He took everything away from Bali. Everything. <laughs> so, what's Krishna going to ask for here? And he's building him up, you know. <clears throat> A great king like you can give anything and everything he's asked. Right? And if he refuses to give charity, he can't be condemned enough. He's lament it's lamentable. Your Majesty must have heard the names of charitable personalities like Harish Chandra, Ranti Dave, Mudgala, who used to live only on grains picked up from the paddy field, and the great Maharaj Sibi, who saved the life of a pigeon by supplying flesh from his own body. These great personalities have attained immortal fame simply by sacrificing this temporary, perishable body. Lord Krishna, in the garb of a Brahmin, thus informed Jarasandha that fame is imperishable. But the body is perishable. If one can attain imperishable name and fame by sacrificing his perishable body, he becomes a very respectable figure in the history of human civilization. Thank you, sir. <laughs> How come that doesn't appeal to me? <laughs> but for someone like Jarasandha, that would be really important to be famous. While Lord Krishna was speaking in the garb of a Brahmin, along with Arjuna and Bhima, Jarasandha marked that the three of them did not appear to actually be Brahmanas. There were signs in their bodies which Jarasandha could understand that they were Chatriyas. Their shoulders were marked with an impression due to carrying bows. They had beautiful bodily structures and their voices were grave and commanding. Thus, he definitely concluded that these were not Brahmanas, but Kshatriyas. He was also thinking that he had seen them somewhere before. Although these three persons were Kshatriyas, they had come to his door begging alms like Brahmanas. Therefore, he decided he would fulfill their desires in spite of their being Kshatriyas. He thought in this way because their position had already been diminished by their appearing before him as beggars. Under the circumstances, he thought, <clears throat> I'm prepared to give away anything, even if they ask for my body. I shall not hesitate to offer it to them. In this regard, he began to think of Bali Maharaj. Lord Vishnu, in the dress of a Brahmin, appeared as a beggar before Bali. And in that way, he snatched away all of his opulence and kingdom. He did this for the benefit of Indra, who, having been defeated by Mali Maharaj, was bereft of his kingdom. Although Bali Maharaj was cheated, his reputation as a great devotee was able to give anything and everything in charity is still glorified throughout the three worlds. <clears throat> Bali Maharaj could guess that the Brahmin was Lord Vishnu himself, and that he had come to him just to take away his opulent kingdom on behalf of Indra. Bali's spiritual master and family priest, Shukacharya, repeatedly warned him about this, and yet Bali did not hesitate to give him charity whatever the Brahmin wanted. At last he gave up everything to the Brahmin. It is my strong determination, thought Jarasandha, that if I can achieve immortal reputation by sacrificing this perishable body, I must act for that purpose. The life of a Chatriya who does not live for the benefit of the Brahmin is certainly condemned. 
That doesn't make any sense. He knows they're not Brahmins. So it doesn't make any sense that he's thinking like that. They appeared as Brahmins, but they weren't Brahmins. But he's accepting them, okay, they're Brahmins. But they're not Brahmins. Doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> Actually, King Jarasandha was very liberal in giving charity to the Brahmins. And thus he informed Lord Krishna, Bhima, and Arjuna. Okay, so he's going along with it. You're Brahmins, okay. My dear Brahmins, you can ask for me whatever you like. If you so desire, you can take my head also. I am prepared to give it. After this, Lord Krishna addressed Jarasandha as follows. My dear king, please note, we're not actually Brahmins, nor have we come to ask for foodstuffs or grains. We're Chatriyas, and we have come to beg a duel with you. We hope that you will agree to this proposal. You may note that here is the second son of King Pandu, Bhimasen, and the third son of Pandu, Arjuna, as for myself, you may know that I am your old enemy, Krishna, the cousin of the Pandavas. When Lord Krishna disclosed their disguises, King Jarasandha began to laugh very loudly. And thus, in great anger and in grave words, he exclaimed, You fools! If you want to fight with me, I immediately grant your request. But Krishna, I know you're a coward. I refuse to fight with you because you become very confused when you face me in fighting. Out of fear of me, you left your own city, Mathura, and now you have taken shelter within the sea. Therefore, I must refuse to fight with you. As far as Arjuna is concerned, I know that he is younger than me and is not an equal fighter. I refuse to fight with him because he is not in any way an equal competitor. But, as far as Bhima Singh is concerned, I think he's a suitable competitor to fight with me. After speaking in this way, King Jarasandha immediately handed a very heavy club to Bhima Singh. He himself took another, and thus all of them went outside the city walls. To fight! Bhima Sain and King Jarasandha engaged themselves in fighting, and with their respective clubs, which were very strong as thunderbolts, they began to strike one another very severely. Both of them being eager to fight. They were both expert fighters with clubs, and their techniques of striking another were so beautiful that they appeared to be two dramatic artists dancing on a stage. Fighting with a club, I mean, I would really like to see how beautiful and dramatic fighting with a club is. I mean, a club, right? You just go like this, bam, bam, <laughs> club. I mean, what were they doing? Like whirling and coming this way and then bouncing around and going. How are they, how is it a beautiful, like, like an actor's beautiful dancing? How, with a club? I mean, it's like... How is that, like, heavy club, you know? Like, heavy club, bong, okay, fought with a club. <laughs> Hare Krishna. When the clubs of Jarasandha and Bhima Sina loudly collided, it sounded like the impact a big tusks of two fighting elephants are like a thunderbolt and a flashing electrical storm. Wow, you know how a thunderbolt makes like a cracking sound. Crack. When two elephants fight together in a sugarcane field, each of them snatches a stick of sugarcane and by snatching it tightly in its truss, strikes one another. No kidding. Elephants take up sugarcane tusks and hit each other with sugarcane stalks? <laughs> 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 
Seriously? Wow. Each elephant heavily strikes his enemy's shoulders, arms, collarbones, chest, thighs, waist, legs, and in this way the sticks of sugar cane are smashed. Similarly, all the clubs used by Jarasandha and Bhimasane were broken. And so the two enemies prepared to fight with their strong fisted hands. Both Jarasandha and Bhimasane were very angry. And they began to smash each other with their fists. When a person becomes angry, they get extraordinary, they're already strong, they get extraordinary strength. Like, it's like an adrenaline thing. It just become, it can do, become extremely accurate in, in, in trying to do things, become extremely accurate, efficient, and, and very strong, even more strong than before. Um, it's the adrenaline. Like, it, it's, it's been known that if a woman's child somehow gets pinned under a car, she becomes so uh, so much adrenaline, she actually picked the car up and slide the child out. These things have, I've heard anyway. <laughs> Lynn says, elephants are very enterprising. Krishna. Yeah, and they never forget either. <laughs> they have good memories. Krishna. The striking of their fists sounded like the striking of iron bars or like the sound of thunderbolts, and they appeared to be like two elephants fighting. Unfortunately, however, Neither was able to defeat the other because both were very expert in fighting. Both were of equal strength and their fighting techniques were equal also. So no one was getting any advantage over the other. They were pounding away and, and they just, no one was phased. Blocking the other's punches, nothing was happening. Nobody was getting... Uh, Tired. Neither Jarasandra nor Bhima Sain became, <clears throat> became fatigued or defeated in the fighting, although they struck each other continually. At the end of a day's fight, so this went on for days, both lived at night as friends in Jarasandra's palace. And the next day they fought again. In this way they passed 27 days in fighting. So they're ready to kill each other during the day. And at night, they're hanging out in the palace. Now I'll have another one of those drinks. <laughs> what you got for dessert? Where's the dancing girls? You know. <laughs> and then the next day, they're all angry, fighting with each other. I don't know about this. I'm tired thinking about it. Ah, oh, Krishna. <laughs> On the 28th day, Bhima Sain told Krishna, My dear Krishna, I must frankly admit that I cannot conquer Jarasandha. Lord Krishna, however, knew the mystery of the birth of Jarasandha. Jarasandha was born in two different parts from two different mothers. When his father saw that the baby was useless, he threw the two parts in the forest, where they were later found by a black-hearted witch named Jara. She managed to join the two parts of the baby from top to bottom. Yeah, Jarasandha's father um, took two of his chief queens to the forest when he was ready to, when he was old, and he was ready, getting ready to leave. But he was lamenting that he left no progeny behind. You know, a king has to leave succession. The sons become the kings, and he didn't have any. He was lamenting. And he approached a sage in the forest with his lamentation that he was going to be leaving, 
that he didn't leave a son for this kingdom. And the sage, by mystic potency, um, gave the king uh, some sweet rice or some kind of preparation, and he uh, advised him to give it, if you give, if give this to, you know, your queen, she'll, she'll conceive, she'll be able to conceive. So he had the two queens with him. They were, he, he loved them both. He was attached to them both. He didn't want a single one out against the other. So he gave half a cup to one and half a cup to the other. And sure enough, they conceived, but each one only gave birth to half a baby. <laughs> so as I say here, the king, well, this is useless. And he just tossed them into the forest. The witch, Jarrah, found the two, and she joined them together to make one baby, and that's Jarasandha. Knowing this, Lord Krishna therefore also knew how to kill him. Ooh, this is going to be painful. He gave hints to Bhima saying that since Jarasandha was brought to life by the joining of two parts of his body, he could be killed by separation of these two parts. Ooh. <laughs> Thus, Lord Krishna transferred his power into the body of Bhimasen and informed him of the device by which Jarasandha could be killed. Lord Krishna immediately picked up a twig from a tree and taking it in his hand, he bifurcated it. Ouch. Hare Krishna. In this way, he hinted to Bhimasen how Jarasandha could be killed. Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is omnipotent, or as some say, omnipotent. And if he wants to kill someone, no one can save that person. And if he wants to save someone, no one can kill him. Similarly, if he wants to save someone, no one can kill him. Informed by the hints of Lord Krishna, Bhima Sain immediately took hold of the legs of Jarasandha and threw him to the ground. When Jarasandha fell to the ground, Bhimasen immediately pressed one of Jarasandha's legs to the ground and took hold of the other leg with his two hands. Catching Jarasandha in this way, he tore his body in two, beginning from the anus up to the head. As an elephant breaks the branches of a tree in two, so Bhimasen separated the body of Jarasandha. <clears throat> the audience standing nearby, and I'm sure there was quite an audience, saw that the body of Jarasandha was now divided in two halves, so that one half had one leg, one thigh, one testicle, one breast, half a backbone, half a chest, one collarbone, one arm, one eye, one ear, and half a face. As soon as the news of Jarasandha's death was announced, all the citizens of Magadha began to cry. Alas, alas, while Lord Krishna and Arjuna embraced Bhima Sain to congratulate him. Although Jarasandha was killed, neither Krishna nor the two Pandava brothers made a claim to the throne. Their purpose in killing Jarasandha was to stop him from creating a disturbance against the proper discharge of world peace, the Rajasuya sacrifice. A demon always creates disturbances, whereas a demigod always tries to keep peace in the world. The mission of Lord Krishna is to give protection to the righteous persons and to kill the demons who disturb a peaceful situation. So I wonder who took charge of the kingdom of Magadha now that the king was dead. Who, who became the king there? <clears throat> oh, okay, here we go. 
Therefore, Lord Krishna immediately called for the son of Jarasandha, whose name was Sahadev. And with due ritualistic ceremonies, he asked him to occupy the seat of his father and reign over the kingdom peacefully. <clears throat> Lord Krishna is the master of the whole cosmic creation, and he wants everyone to live peacefully and execute Krishna consciousness. After installing Sahadeva on the throne, he released all the kings and princes who had been imprisoned unnecessarily by Jarasandha. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the seventh chapter of Krishna, the liberation of King Jarasandha. Yeah, Krishna. Right from his birth, Jarasandha was a problem. Yeah, his father made a mistake when he was given that uh, benediction by the sage in the form of the preparation for his wife to con conceive, and he made a mistake. He split it in half because he was attached to his queens. <clears throat> Baby was born in halves and found by a witch in the forest. I mean, that's not a real good start, you know. <laughs> that's not a real good start. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari. When children are born, there it's the actual process in Krishna consciousness is uh, there's a sacrifice that's performed before the parents conceive. Um, Garbhanan Samskara, I think it's called, and they prepare so that. They're going to call um, a wonderful child to come for the benefit of the world. And they take it as their service that they will be raising this child for Krishna. Uh, they chant at least 50 rounds. And that's how it's done now. And uh, the husband's favorite preparation, the wife prepares a nice dinner, it's his favorite foods. And they do that in preparation to call a nice child. So these things are complicated if they're not in Krishna consciousness. Like the king made that little tiny mistake, just like King Riga when he gave his cows in charity, some tiny little um, deviation and it wasn't even his fault the cow wandered back and then he gave it to another brahmin and then the brahmins were fighting because they felt there and he tried to buy them off with a hundred thousand cows and then that was that no you can't buy us off this is this is a whole nother issue it's about our potency as brahmins it's not about a cow um it's about maintaining the laws and the, the scriptures if you give it you can't take it back and it was a big mess, and the king ended up taking birth as a lizard. <laughs> There's a tiny little discrepancy. So also, it was a tiny little discrepancy. The king was attached to his queens. He didn't follow the advice of the sage. The sage said to give it to his queen so she could, and he didn't want to just give it to one, so he split it up. What, do you think he was going to get two children? He maybe thought he was going to get two sons. Yeah, he was going to. He was going to cash in on this. He's going to get two sons. Must have been what he thought. Instead, he got two halves of one. And because of the discrepancy and not following what the sage prescribed properly, then it was a mess. Jarasandha was actually a demon. I think we should attract a demon.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Okay, see what goes on here. Um, Lance, if you're still here, I'm going to go offline and then uh, I'm going to sign back on. I don't know, maybe you've gone to do errands or chores or something, but if you're still here, I'm going to go off and then come back on. Hare Krishna.